In today's video, we'll be taking a look at Studio One MIDI Basics. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So if you're just getting started with Studio One, learning how to record and edit MIDI is a key skill. And that's what we're gonna be looking at in today's video. We're gonna be running through what MIDI actually is, how to set up Studio One to record MIDI, and how to edit MIDI in different ways. So stick around for all of that. But before we do get started, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into some MIDI. So I thought we'd start off by talking about what MIDI actually is, because I see some people who've been recording for years who still get confused about this, so let's dispel that confusion now. I've got a project open here in Studio One, and I've enlarged two tracks. The first one in blue there is a MIDI track. That's something I've recorded earlier, and you can see the notes there on that MIDI track. The second one is a bass guitar track, and that's an audio track. That's the two types of things that you can really record in Studio One. MIDI and audio. Now, if we have a listen, I press play, you can hear that bass guitar. And you can see the waveform there. And that's because we've recorded that in much the same way as we used to record to tape. We've recorded the actual sound of the instrument. Now, with the MIDI track, if I go to the piano and then I click on play, That is the sound of silence. And that's because MIDI itself makes no sound. Let me say that again, MIDI makes no sound. Instead, what MIDI does is it records events. In this case, the events of me playing on my external keyboard. It records which note was played, it remembers how long that note was played for, whether I'm using the sustain pedal, whether I'm using modulation, pitch bend, all kinds of other controls on my keyboard. But the actual sound is not recorded. Now, in the old days, what we used to do was we would connect uh, say an, a synthesizer or a drum machine via MIDI cables to the computer and then we could use this as a sequencer. We could control those external instruments using MIDI information like this. But if we actually wanted to get the sound of the actual instrument, we had to still use audio cables coming from that instrument, going into an audio interface and actually record the sound. Now these days we have something called virtual instruments. These are really like synthesizers inside the computer itself because computers are much more powerful now. And of course, we don't have to use cables to make the connections, but we do, do still have to make a connection of a kind, and that's a software connection. So what I'm gonna do now is connect this MIDI track up to a virtual instrument. I've got one already loaded up. So I'll just go up here to the top and I'll select the output of this MIDI and it's gonna go to this piano uh, instrument here. Now, if I press play, so that MIDI information is actually playing that piano in real time. Every time I hit play on my DAW Studio One, it's actually going to play any MIDI, uh, MIDI instruments in real time time. That's very, very handy because we can make adjustments to the notes. So we could change some pitches. We could change the duration of notes. We could actually change the instrument itself. We could hook this MIDI up to a different instrument if we decide not to use this piano. And that's all the things I'm going to be covering in the rest of this tutorial. So I hope that's clear to you now what MIDI actually is. No sound, just information about what was played. So in order to record some MIDI, you're gonna to have to have some kind of input device, either an external keyboard, like a controller keyboard, or a synthesizer, or an electric piano, or maybe a drum machine. Now, if you don't have any of those things, I'm gonna show you a quick workaround so that you can actually use your computer keyboard to play notes. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're at the start screen here in Studio One. Let's quickly set some things up. We'll go down to uh, configure external devices. I'll click on that. Now, let's use the case we you don't have an external device first because it's very, very easy to set up your QWERTY keyboard. Just click on add at the bottom here, go down to the Presonus folder, open that up, go down to where it says QWERTY keyboard, click on OK, and you've added your computer keyboard as a device that can be used for MIDI input. Now, the the other way of doing it is when you have something like an external keyboard, and that's gonna slightly vary depending on which one you have. In my case, I have a specific one which is in the list. So I'll click on add. Mine's a Yamaha and I'll go down to the Yamaha folder and I'll click on KX and I'll click 
um, I'll just make sure that I set up the ports correctly. So this is where your uh, your instrument is connected to the computer, whether it by whether it's by MIDI cables or whether it's by USB. In my case, it's by a USB cable, and that's called USB MIDI cable. And I'm going to set that for the receive from and the receive. Two, and I'll click on OK for that. Now, if you go to add and you look at the list of devices there and yours is not listed, that's OK. Just click on new keyboard at the top there. Give it a name, I'll leave mine as new keyboard, and then just select your uh, connection there, whether it's, as I say, MIDI or a USB cable. Select the in and out connections, click OK. And the main functions of that keyboard are gonna work, the, the keys and probably a few other smaller functions like the sustain pedal, modulation pitch, etc. But you won't have complete control over your keyboard, but you can use it as a MIDI input device. So that is how you go ahead and uh, add your instruments. And now we're ready to go ahead and actually create our first MIDI track. So I'm going to start off by creating a new song. I'm here at the Studio One start page and I'm just going to click on create a new song. That brings up this dialog box and I want to create an empty song. So under styles, I'll just select the empty songs or empty song template and I'll call this song MIDI. Creative, huh? And then I'll click on OK. And that opens up this empty song here. Now, if I just want to go ahead and create a pure MIDI track, I could right click on the left over here and select add an instrument track. Now, these terms are a little bit interchangeable in Studio One, MIDI and instrument here. So to create a MIDI track, we create an instrument track. Now, this is like the track that we created earlier on, the one that had no sound. If we recorded something in here now with our keyboard, things would appear on the screen, but there would be no actual sound. And it's, that's because it's not connected to any kind of instrument. And if you were connecting to an external instrument, such as a synthesizer, a piano, a drum machine, this is how you would probably create that track. But we're gonna be connecting to a virtual instrument and one that everybody should have on their system. And that's a little bit easier than just adding an instrument track there. So we'll get rid of that one. I'll click on remove track. And instead we're gonna go over to the right hand side here and in the Browse window, we're going to select the Instruments tab, which I already have selected. I'm going to go down to the Presonus folder and double click on that. And then I'm going to double click on Presence. That's our Presence virtual instrument. And then under these presets, I'm going to go for Piano. I'll double click on Piano folder. And then I'm going to select the third one down, which is Acoustic Piano Full. And I'm just going to drag it all the way over to the left hand side. And what that does is it sets up our MIDI track, but it also sets up the virtual instrument as well. And it connects the two together so that we're ready to go. Now, if you didn't see that particular instrument there, it's probably because you haven't downloaded it yet. In order to do that, just quickly go up to Studio One at the top there and then go to Studio One installation. That opens up this window where you can install extras for Studio One and you want to go into the Instruments folder and the Presence XT Core Library. And I would actually just download all of the instruments in there, but if you just want this particular one, I think it's in the Presence XT Core Keyboards Library. I'm not absolutely certain, but I'm pretty sure it is. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. I've already got it, so I don't need to download it, but you should if you want to follow along with this exactly. So we have our instrument ready almost to record, but there's a couple of things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make sure we have an input selected. Now, that's the two things that we added earlier. Now, I've got my Yamaha keyboard. You may be using the PC keyboard. So let's take a look at that first. Um, in order to use the PC keyboard, what you're going to have to do is open the mix window. I'll do that by clicking on mix at the bottom right hand corner. And this shows the mix console and right over to the left, you can see there's an external button there to show external instruments or connections, sorry, devices. And that'll open up that. And then you can see your QWERTY keyboard there. Double click on that and it'll open up this uh, QWERTY keyboard interface, which you can see there. And now if I play on my computer keyboard, nothing happens. And that's because we need to be able to arm this so that we can hear sound. So I'll just get rid of that mix um, window there and I'll go up to the top where I've got created my track and I'm just going to record enable it by hitting the record button. That also switches on this speaker icon here so that we can hear things. If you didn't actually want to record at the moment, you could just hit the speaker icon so you can hear what's going on. But I'm going to record, so I'll click on that. Now, if I play in my QWERTY keyboard, I can play my piano and I can also 
play on my uh, Yamaha keyboard here, which is this one. Okay, if you want to uh, pick a specific device to record from, just click on this I icon up here, open that, go down to In, and then you can select a specific input there. At the moment, I've got it listening to all inputs. It will record from whatever I play. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go ahead and record, but we want to be setting up the metronome. So while I'm recording, I want to play along with a click or a metronome to stay in time. So I need to be setting that up as well as the tempo of the song as well. So right at the bottom to the right of the transport controls, we can see this metronome section here. And I'm just going to click on that sort of triangular shape icon there and turn it blue. And that means we can now hear the metronome. If I press play by pressing space on my keyboard, we can hear that the metronome is set up. And there's a couple of things. It may not be at the correct tempo and also it may not be loud enough. So let's deal with the tempo first. To the right again of that metronome section, we'll see the tempo section over there. Now I can just click on that number where it says 71 at the moment. I can click on that and I can enter a new value. If I put in 100, press enter, that sets up the tempo of the song like that. Or you may want to set it up by feel. You can sort of feel that tempo when you're playing. And the way you'll do that is to uh, left click with your mouse on the word tempo here just for a few bars and it's going to calculate the actual beats per minute that you need. So I'll do that now. Takes a little while before it kind of calibrates and it's settled on 70 there and that seems fine. So I've done, you know, a bar and a half of clicks there. Now, once you've done that, you may want to set up the volume of the metronome. We're going to do that by clicking on the mix button here to open up the mix console. And right to the right hand side of that console, we can see the master fader. Now, right in the middle above the master fader, you can see a little icon there. And if we hold down on that icon, icon, we can adjust the level of the click or the metronome there. So I'll put it up at the top and then I'll press play again to have a listen. Now that still may not be loud enough for you if you want it to cut through while you're recording. So what you can also do, I'll just shut the mix control. What you can also do is go back to the metronome section, click on that little spanner icon there, and that brings up a few more uh, properties of the metronome there. So I'm just going to push that accent level up quite a lot and that beat level up quite a lot there now. I'll close that, have a listen. Okay, that's quite a bit louder especially on the accent there. So that'll be fine for me. So we're ready to go ahead and record this piano part. So my click and tempo are set up and I have my track arm for recording because I can see that nice red button highlighted there. And I'm ready to start recording. Now I'm gonna leave it a bar or so before I actually play anything. I always like to leave a little bit of a space at the beginning of a song. And I'm gonna start recording by hitting either on the record button at the bottom here or I'm going to click on my asterisk key on my computer keyboard, which is my preferred method, and that's going to start the recording. Now, wish me luck because I'm not that good a piano player, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so it's not the best performance ever, but it is the best that I could do for the moment. And sometimes we have to make do with that. But it does leave scope for me to edit things and make it a little bit better. So let's get into that. Before we do start editing, I'm just gonna tidy up my interface a little bit. I don't need the presence window anymore, so I'll get rid of that. And I don't need the browse panel anymore, so I'll get rid of that by clicking on the browse button at the bottom right. And then I'm not gonna be doing any more recording, so I can disarm this track for recording by clicking on the record button up there on the track and then I'm going to start editing. So I'll select the clip that I've just uh, created there and I'm going to start editing by hitting the edit button down the bottom or you could click F2 on the keyboard as well to open up the piano roll window which is what we're going to be editing with. Now there's a couple of things that you can do with this window. You can drag the top of it up to make it bigger which would be quite handy in this case or you can actually detach it. Now right in the top right hand corner of this panel there's an arrow, diagonal arrow. Click on that and that detaches this interface. Now I find this really rather handy. Um, if I resize it there, 
I find it handy because I use two monitors normally, so I can drag this off onto the other monitor, double click on its title bar like so, and the whole thing takes up the whole screen. It gives me a nice space to work with. Um, but I'm working in one screen today for this tutorial, so I'll just attach it back down there. But it's a really handy thing to do. I also do that with the mix window as well, just so you know. Now, what we have here on the left-hand side is a piano keyboard, and that shows us which notes are being played here in the main view. So you can actually click on that to hear the notes. And then we get the main view itself where we can see the notes. Now you'll notice at the top there's a ruler and the numbers on that ruler uh, show you the number of the bar and then the beat within the bar. So we've got bar two here at the beginning um, and then uh, beats two, three and four there. Now you're going to notice quite a few vertical lines there in between. I would sort of refer to those as the grid lines and they become very, very important later for quantizing and snapping, which we will get to. Um, but do be aware that you can change those grid lines up here with the quantize settings. So it's set to 1 16th at the moment, meaning the whole bar is divided into 16 parts. Each beat, therefore, is divided into four. So I could change that to, say, one eight. The whole bar is divided into eight. Each beat is divided into two. OK, so I'll change it back to one sixteenth there, just so that uh, I think that's where we're going to need it. So how do we actually go about editing individual notes? Let's say we've got this note here. If we click on it, it will highlight. And if we grab the middle of it, we can just drag it around. So we can drag it up and down to a different pitch or we can drag it from side to side to a different position, okay? Now you'll notice it is snapping there. It's snapping to each line on that grid line there, and it's also snapping to the point here where it was. It, wasn't, it didn't start off quite on the grid line yet. It's just a little bit before, and it's staying on there. Now that's really, really handy if you just wanna change the pitch of a note without changing its timing. It'll snap to that little offbeat that it's on there, okay? So that's how you can change the position and the pitch of the note. Now, if you didn't want it to snap at all, you at all, you would turn that feature off. So you can either toggle it by clicking up here on this icon, or you can use N on your keyboard to toggle it off and on. And then when it's off, you can freely drag that to any timing that you wish, okay? So pretty easy so far, I think you'll agree. Now, if you wanna change the start time of the, or the start point of the note without changing the rest of the duration of the note, or the, the, where the note ends, I should say, you can just grab the beginning. So hover over the beginning of the note, the icon will change, and then you can start to drag the beginning of the note around, and you'll notice the end stays in position. Likewise, you can go to the end of the note, and you can drag the end of the note around as well. Now let's say you want to change the duration of a number of notes. Well, let's grab a few that have a different duration. So I'm dragging, left dragging across with my mouse, selecting all of those, it hovered on that one as well, so it grabbed that one. And then if I drag the endpoints of the notes, you'll notice they all change. To make that easier to see, I'm just going to turn the snapping off, and you'll see that they change relatively. So if they started off short, they get shorter relatively. If they're long, they'll still stay as long notes. Okay, now if you wanna make them all the same length exactly, then just hold control on the keyboard as you drag, and then they'll snap to whatever length the first note, that, the, the note that you're actually dragging is going to, okay? And then you'll have uniform lengths on those notes. So that's quite handy if you want uniform lengths. So apart from changing the pitch of the note and the, uh, the position, the beginning and the end of the note, we can also do things like change the velocity of a note. So um, that's all in the bottom part here of this interface. And it's a little small at the moment, so I'll just hover over the top of that and I'll just drag it up. Okay, and now because velocity is selected on the left-hand side over here, we can see the velocity of the individual notes. So we can go ahead and start to drag those lines around. And you'll hear that it plays the note every couple of seconds, every second or so, just so that you can hear how loud it's becoming. Okay. Now, if you, it, sometimes it's a little difficult to choose an individual note, especially when they're clustered together like these ones are here. So what we would do in that case is select the note up here that we want to change the velocity of, say this one here, and then when we drag down here, it's only going to change 
that highlighted note, not the ones around it. So that's really, really handy. Likewise, you can make a selection of notes uh, across this way horizontally. So maybe I want to select all those notes there and I want to change the velocity of all of those. So I'm going to drag one of them up and down. And can you see that they're all changing in velocity, but relatively, okay? Now, if you want them all to snap to the same velocity, hold control on the keyboard and there they are, they've snapped to the same velocity. So that's another way to get some uniformity if that's what you want. So that covers the basics of sort of changing the notes which are already there. Of course, you can go ahead and delete notes if you want. You could select a note and just hit delete on the keyboard and that note disappears, I'll undo that. And if you want to create a new note, you can just double click somewhere like so and it creates that note. Now it's gonna create it to the, the length of the note is gonna be dependent upon the quantize settings you've got up there. So if you want to create a bunch of longer notes than that, then you would uh, change the quanto settings to say something like one quarter. So it's just uh, a whole beat for each note. And then when I insert it, it's going to be created at that length. Okay. So you can just manually create them in that way. So that really covers the basics of editing um, MIDI. There's quite a lot more to it. There's some really nice sort of actions and things you get in Studio One for MIDI. We'll cover that in a later tutorial, but that's all we'll need to know for the basic editing for now, except for the fact we want to deal with quantizing. So quantizing is a function where we attempt to get the computer to tidy up the timing of our playing automatically for us. So rather than individually edit notes as we were a moment ago, we can get the computer to select a whole bunch of notes, maybe the whole song, and apply quantizing, and it will try to correct the timing of those notes for us. Now, it's really simple to apply quantizing. Um, if we select something like this clip at the top here we just recorded, we just have to hit Q on the keyboard to apply quantizing. But what actually happens depends on the settings that you have set up previously. So I'll undo that. Now there's a couple of places where we can uh, create those settings. First of all, at the top of the screen in Studio One, you'll see a section there where it actually says quantize. Um, and at the moment it's set to 1 16th and there's some um, related settings next to that. Also, just a little further to the left, you'll see a Q button there. If you click that, it opens up a panel, which um, we have some quantize settings there as well. Now those all relate to quantizing anything in this tracks view up here, so like this whole clip we've just selected. But we also have similar or the same quantize settings down in the edit view further down. So again we have where it says quantize there we can select make some different selections there and then also off to the left there we have a Q button again where we can open similar settings. So the settings um, that you create um, are applied in the place where you've created those settings, if that makes much sense. So the ones at the top relate to the things in the track view, the ones down the bottom in the edit view relate to things in the edit view, and they can be different settings. So for example, if at the top, I'll just set my quantizing to uh, something different, I'll select the clip and I'll click Q, and you'll see down the bottom all those notes changed bang, to some weird positions, I'll undo that. Now if I go down to the bottom, it's set to 1 16th, I'll select a whole bunch of notes like so, hit Q on my keyboard, and you'll see something quite different happen there because there's different settings. So what those settings are really about is quite simple if you look at the grid lines. You remember earlier we talked about these uh, vertical grid lines. I have got my uh, bars divided into 16 at the moment here. So what the computer's gonna do is look at the beginning of that note, and we're focusing on the beginning, you can actually quantize ends as well, but we'll look at the beginning of that note and it'll say, hey, where's the nearest bar line? And obviously, we can see it's that one. So it, when I hit Q, it's just gonna move that to that bar line. And that's the sort of basics of how you set up your quantizing. So if you're getting unexpected results when you quantize, there's probably two reasons for that. One is that uh, you haven't set that setting correctly. You haven't got your division set up correctly. So that's the one thing to look at. And the other thing is if your playing is really awful, if the timing is really way off, then of course uh, the computer's just gonna put it in the wrong place because the computer doesn't really understand music in the same way me and you do. Um, now, if you're more musically inclined, if you come from a more music theory background, you may find it a little bit easier to use uh, the quantize settings here by hitting that 
uh, that Q button. Um, so I could change it here to, you know, say like crotchets there and I could move it to that and that set that up there. So if I hit the apply button, you'll see that it applies uh, quantizing again there. You can see the grid's changed as well. So if I just shuffle that over to the there and apply that quantizing, you'll see it was a little closer to that line, so it's moved it there. So that's a really important function um, in MIDI. Now, you do want to play around with some of these settings a bit because if you over quantize things, then that's when we get that really robotic music, which doesn't sound very human. Um, on a part like this, uh, when it's a piano part, You'll notice, for example, there's uh, some chords here. Look at this chord here, that's a good example. And you'll see that not only the notes slightly before the bar, which can be a good thing sometimes that for to have uh, things just sort of attacking that beat, um, but they're also in slightly staggered sort of timings because as you hit the piano keyboard, you don't necessarily hit them exactly all at the same time and that's a good thing for a piano sound you'll notice if you do quantize something like this chord here let's have a listen to it before we quantize it okay and now I'll quantize it and it's just a little bit too rigid sound if you do that to the whole piece um, for something like a piano, it can sound a little odd. So you want to be a little bit careful, play around with some of the things um, like the range setting here that can help you out with that sort of thing, uh, the swing setting. I'll let you fiddle around with that. The main thing you need to understand about quantizing at the moment though, is your basic grid settings. So if you remember earlier, we talked about the fact that MIDI has no actual sound, but instead we're recording just events. And that makes it incredibly flexible because as you can see, we've been able to move some of those events around. We can affect duration, we can affect pitch, um, all that good stuff. The other thing that we can do is change the actual sound itself. And I'm just gonna show you quickly with a little experiment how we could do that here. So I'm just gonna uh, change over to the mix window here by clicking on mix. And on the console, all, all the way over to the left, you can see this column I've got there and it's instruments. And that shows my present instrument that I've got there at the moment. Um, if you can't see that, you'll just need to click on that instrument toggle there right on the left. Now, just for now, I'm just gonna go in, click that little triangle and rename that. If you remember, that is a piano. So let's name it piano, just so we can be sure. Then I'm gonna go over to my browse panel. Um, and I'm gonna go into my, um, on my instruments tab, I'm gonna go to Presonus, go to presence again. This time I'm gonna select a guitar and then let's go for nylon guitar. And we'll go for the nylon guitar full. I'm just going to drag that over to that column there. Okay. So what that's done is it's loaded up this guitar instrument. Okay. But this time we haven't actually created a new MIDI track up there. Okay. And we'll go ahead and actually rename that one. I guess you guessed right. If I can type guitar. Okay. And just for fun, let's do one more. I'm going to go for keyboards. Let's go for Wurlitzer, we'll do Wurlitzer full, drag it across, okay, and then I'll rename it. There may be an easier way to do this. Tell me in the description if you know. Uh, we'll call it a Whirly. Not even that, Whirly. <laughs> Typing is my strength. I can't even see if I got it right still. Anyway, doesn't really matter. So let's play, let's turn the metronome off quickly and then let's just play that piano part to refresh ourselves. Okay, cool. But now we have these other instruments at our disposal, which I just want to experiment with. So up here, where it, we've got our piano as our output for our MIDI, I'm just going to change it to guitar. Let's change it to guitar. Try again. Same part, but it's now a guitar. And then let's say I'll change it to this Wurlitzer organ. How's it gonna sound? Actually, I don't mind that at all. Could be the beginnings of a new song. So that shows the incredible flexibility of MIDI. 
So that should get you started with using MIDI in Studio One. And I'll be covering it a little bit more in future episodes where we'll drill into some details a little bit. Now, if you've got any questions at all, please do ask in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer you there. Now, if you did like this video and you found it helpful, do make sure you hit the like button. That helps me out because it lets YouTube know that it should show other people this video. If you didn't like this video for any reason, then do make sure you hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.